Welcome to my build review of the Bristol Blenheim Mark I from Airfix. In this video I will show you how I built and painted this 70 second scale plastic model kit. For the most part I followed the instructions, so one of the first steps was the assembly of the fuselage. As you can see I used clothes packs and Tamiya extra thin plastic cement. Then it was time to assemble the landing gear. Many parts just slide into place which is great. Joining the upper and lower parts for the wings was also no problem. There were a few gaps and imperfections along the edge where the parts join though. I used a cheap putty to fill these gaps. Now I was able to join the fuselage with the wing section. Again this created small gaps. To make the model a bit more lively I decided to mount the control surfaces at an angle. A nice touch of this kit is that you can display the flaps in the retracted or lowered position. Again the assembly of these parts was straightforward without any fitting issues whatsoever. The next area to work on were the engines. As you can see, they consist of 14 parts each. Unfortunately, this design led to nasty gaps that I had to work on. The result still wasn't perfect, but I wanted to move on. The next step was the cockpit. While the design is a bit complicated, the detail is quite nice with a few instruments on the side panels. And there is one decal for the gauges. This kit comes with one pilot figure, even though the Blenheim Mark I had three seats. Anyways, better than nothing, right? I'm still having difficulties painting such small figures, but I did my best to get a good result. Here you can see the pilot in his office. Masking off the canopy frame with its complicated shapes would have been a nightmare, but luckily Kit masks provided masks that are specifically designed for this Airfix kit. They are very precise and I can totally recommend them to anyone building an aircraft with such complex canopies. Check out Kit Masks website, their product range is quite large. It took me a while to place all the masks on the individual windows, but it would have taken me hours to cut them out myself. Here you can see all the clear parts I had to mask off. Thanks again to Kit Masks for saving me a lot of time and trouble. To glue the clear parts in place I used white glue. The adhesiveness isn't very strong, but it doesn't leave any residue or fog up the parts. I experienced quite some fitting issues with this cockpit section unfortunately. Therefore I had to use super glue where possible. The white glue just isn't strong enough for such a challenge. However, the worst part of this kit was yet to come. Joining the cockpit section with the rest of the airframe posed a real challenge. I had to remove quite some material in order to fit the sections together. When the cockpit was finally in place, some gaps had to be filled to get a somewhat smooth finish. The fit of the bomb bay doors was also quite bad and required additional gap filling. The upper part of the canopy caused even more problems because it created another huge gap. In a stupid attempt to bend this part in shape, I broke it. Luckily this made the alignment a bit easier, but there was still a gap left. I did not want to use putty on clear parts, so I simply filled the gap with white glue. I wonder if there would have been a better design option for this section, because I heard about the same problems from several other modelers. Anyways, when I had finally found my motivation again, I painted the underside black and masked off the edges. Then I used this template to spray random patterns on the upper side. 
The purpose of this pre-shading is to create slight differences in color when applying the final paint. This metal template is a bit difficult to use on curved surfaces, but luckily it's not about accuracy here. For the fun of it, and because I need to get better with this technique, I used two different colors. Then I also did some pre-shading on the panel lines. This is a good exercise to practice precise airbrushing and finding the right ratio of air pressure and paint consistency. While I was at it, I also used the black paint to darken up a few panels and the areas near the engines. This would give me a base for future weathering of this area. To create the two-tone camo of this plenum, I used Patafix Poster Tag. I've often used it before and it's my go-to solution for such camo schemes. For the brown color, I used Hataka's Field Drap. In order to retain the pre-shading, it's important to only spray on thin coats of paint. Often I used too many layers, so the pre-shading isn't visible anymore and all the work was for nothing. Here you can see the result after using the Field Drap. Petafix is very easy to use and doesn't leave any residue on the model. I don't own any paint specifically for the RAF, so for the green color tone the color converter app I use suggested to use RLM81 for that job. I gave it a try on the stabilizer, but RLM81 from Ammo doesn't come close to the green tone on the real Blenheim. I ended up using Swedish Dark Green from Hataka, which still isn't 100% accurate, but better than all the other paints I own. Again I used Patafix Poster Tag to mask off the camo scheme. Then I applied light coats of green at a 90 degree angle to get a relatively smooth transition between the two colors. I tried not to use too much paint in order to let the pre-shading shine through a bit. The final result was quite satisfying. You can still make out the pre-shading underneath the main colors and the panel lines are also accentuated. With the main objective out of the way, it was time to paint some details. The first in line were the engines. I masked off other areas to protect them from MRP steel that I used here. I haven't used MRP before, but from what I've seen so far, these are amongst the best paints you can get. Furthermore, they are quite easy to clean from your airbrush. The next step was some weathering. For that I used this shader and sprayed it along the engines. This should give the impression of the effects created by the heat of the engines. Then it was time for the decals. Apart from the RAF markings and a few stencils, there are not that many decals. The placement was straightforward and I did not run into any issues here luckily. In order to let the decals conform to the panel lines, I used Mark Fit from Tamiya. It also helps to gently slide a sharp blade along the panel lines to get a more realistic result. However, don't blame me for any issues this might lead to. I also uploaded a tutorial on this topic if you need more details. When all the decals were in place, I used pigments to create more weathering effects. I also used these to blend in some of the decals. Then I used oils on the engines to achieve a grimy and more realistic result. One of the final steps to complete this model was the completion of the landing gear. Airfix gives you the option to place the aircraft on the ground or with the landing gear retracted. Then I glued the propellers in place. The turret of the rear gunner also comes with two options, but since there isn't a gunner figure included, I used the lowered frame. Finally I used metallic paints and this so-called sniper brush to recreate some paint chipping. 
The last detail to be added was the wire for the antenna. I used MOF mix rigging which is relatively easy to use and gives a realistic impression. And last but not least it was finally time to remove the masks from the canopy. This is always my favorite thing to do on a model and in this case everything had worked out nicely. Thanks again to Kit Masks for the excellent product. The clear parts have been protected and the result is much more precise than if I had cut out the masks myself. Overall this Airfix kit was a real challenge for my motivation. The Blenheim isn't an aircraft I'm particularly interested in and the issues with the canopy section and in other areas didn't help find my mojo either. That said, I'm relieved that I did not give up and the final result is still somewhat acceptable. As soon as the plenum was done, I started my next project. You will find pictures of that on my Facebook and Instagram channels soon, so don't forget to check out the links in the description of the video. Furthermore, I went to a couple of air shows and aviation related museums lately. So if you're looking for reference material for one of your models, look no further. I'm looking forward to your honest feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching and bye!